not good at coming up with catchy titles. <laughs> I don't even think I gave Rob a title. <laughs> so good job, Rob. <laughs> I didn't even know what titles. I'm terrible at that part. All right, it's Pentecost Sunday, trivia time. Why is it called Pentecost? Who knows? Anyone? That was a pentagon. A five-sided, yeah. So Pentecost is 50 days after the crucifixion. Yeah. And Pentecost happened on a feast day. I, I tell you, like, the way it was all set up, like, think about how these feasts were set up in the Old Testament, and then this is, it, it still manifests in the New Testament. So Pentecost before it was what it is now, was an Old Testament feast day. Anyone know what that was? I didn't either. I had to look it up. It was called the Week of Weeks because it was seven weeks after Passover. After Passover? Wait, I got it in my notes. Oh, these are sunglasses. That's not going to help <laughs> It was a Week of Weeks. It was seven weeks after Passover. It was also called the Feast of the Harvest Day or the Feast of First Fruits. So there were two like feast days of the grain harvest and this was one of them and so people would bring they would make bread out of the first fruits of the grain harvest and come and so it was a it was a pilgrimage holiday people came from all over all the jews came from all over to jerusalem and it was like new year's it was like a party there was no school there was no work there were thousands of people in the city who weren't normally there they were all partying and like hanging out this camping out in the streets and and having a good time and so when Jesus died and he rose again, so he was on, he was living and work, walking around for 40 days after his resurrection. And then he told the disciples, go to Jerusalem and hang out and wait. And then power is going to come on you. Now I'm thinking, these guys are already spreading the gospel, doing miracles, healing people, casting out demons, and they don't have power yet? Like what? <laughs> that sounds pretty powerful to me. But Jesus is like, now I need you to go to Jerusalem and hang out. And he didn't, I don't believe he told them how long. Because this is how he does. He just says, I got this thing, go do it. And just wait for me to show up. And you don't know when it's going to happen. So they're at Pentecost, they're, they're celebrating Pentecost. And that's when the Holy Spirit comes on them. And all that stuff that Jesus had foretold happens. So this was ten days after he is ascended into heaven. Okay. Um. So, it says here in Acts 2, on the day of Pentecost, on the day Pentecost was being fulfilled, all the disciples were gathered in one place. Suddenly, they heard the sound of a violent blast of wind rushing into the house from the heavenly realm. A roar of the wind was so overpowering, it was that anyone could bear it. It was so overpowering, anyone could bear it. Then all at once, a pillar of fire appeared before their eyes, and it separated into tongues of fire that engulfed each one of them. They were all filled and equipped with the Holy Spirit and were inspired to speak in tongues, empowered by the Spirit to speak in tongues they had never learned. Okay, so imagine you're at this New Year's celebration and everyone's hanging out. This was so loud that people who were outside the house hanging out heard it and came running like, what's happening? And imagine you're just hanging out with your, your family and friends at New Year's and suddenly this loud noise and this gush of wind and a pillar of fire appears in your house. I'd be like, Ooh, what's happening? And then the, it separated and it engulfed all of them in fire. And they didn't get burned like the, guy, like the, the three guys in Daniel's story. Okay? Like that sounds amazing to me. And so that got me thinking, like, okay, pillar of fire. Where else have we seen a pillar of fire? Well, in the Old Testament, it was a, the Israelites followed a pillar of fire by, a pillar of smoke by day and a pillar of fire by night. And whenever they camped out and stayed somewhere, that pillar of fire would come and rest over the Holy of Holies, which is where the ark was kept. And so in the, for the Old Testament people, they knew that a pillar of fire means the presence of the Lord. It means that God is there resting on that place so this is very sick this pillar of fire isn't a new concept it's an old concept of the embodiment of where the lord rests so in, at, up until this point the lord was resting over the temple that solomon had built if you guys remember solomon david's son he built this temple and that's where the that's where the, the lord was like lived if you will okay 
So until this time, people with pilgrimage, they would come to Jerusalem to really hear, I mean, they could hear the gospel elsewhere, but like that's, everyone knew like that's where the Lord lives, was in Jerusalem. Well, Jesus is like, okay, that's cool, but I want us to be bigger. Okay, not everybody can get to Jerusalem. It's time for us to disperse. And so when he came in fire like that on people, he was basically saying, okay, well, I'm done living in this building, and now I'm going to live in my people. And wherever they go, I am. And I think that's really cool, that now it can be spread wherever it goes. Um, and, I, oh, and so Jesus, Jesus had power, and he taught his guys to have power when they were with him. I kind of feel like this is like, when he was alive, I kind of feel like that was like Jesus school, you know, that they all went to. And then... When he died and came back, he was in and out. He didn't, like, it doesn't sound to me like he was with them all the time. And so I feel like that was kind of like their, like, internship. You know, like, you're out doing your thing, I'm going to check on you. And I kind of feel like this moment of Pentecost is kind of like graduation in some ways. Like, they have graduated now, and now they have all the power of Jesus. And I love that it says, um... Jesus said that, truly, I tell you, whoever believes in me will do the works I have been doing, and they're going to do even greater things because I'm going to the Father. Hold up. Jesus, like, multiplied food, healed people, walked on water, and we're going to do more than he did? Like, that sounds cool and scary and amazing, but that's what he said, and Jesus doesn't lie. But he was saying, like, I have to go because right now there's just one of me. And when the Holy Spirit comes, now there's going to be millions of me. So when we have the Holy Spirit in us, we kind of become baby Jesuses. And I love that idea that we're like, there's like, they have pocket Jesuses. Have you ever seen, you can find them in stores. They're like, it's like a little Jesus statue. It's like this big. <laughs> and you can put it in your pocket. <laughs> um, but I love that Jesus trusts us enough to do what he does out in the world. And we've been talking about gifts. And so Jesus says to them, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to ask the Father, and he will give you an advocate, someone to help you and be with you forever, the spirit of truth. And the world can't accept him because it doesn't see him or know him, but you know him, and he lives with you, and he will be in you. So when we accept Jesus as our Lord, when we get baptized, the Holy Spirit comes in us and lives with us. And we carry him wherever we go, like a little pocket Jesus, a little pocket Holy Spirit, goes with us wherever we are. We become the temple. We become the holies of holy, holies of holy of holies. We become like the ark, where the ark lives, wherever we go. The ark was known for having this immense power, and anybody who had the ark who went into battle, they won. But we kind of have little baby arks with us wherever we go now because we have the Holy Spirit. It was the Holy Spirit that gave power to the ark. And so it's the Holy Spirit that gives power to us wherever we go. So that means whatever we say should happen. And this is why we have to be careful what we say. Because if we say bad things about people or to people or whatever, that can also then happen. Okay? So I got to thinking about these fire. And I'm imagining, like, I imagine that like little candles. Like, I always imagined, like, a little flame on their heads. You know? And so that got me thinking about what are things that carry fire? What are fire carriers? So we've got birthday candles. We've got those trick birthday candles that you think you've blown out, but psych, you haven't. <laughs> you've got taper candles, which these are like, like these, right? You've got torches, I think like Indiana Jones, you know, carrying the big torch wherever he goes, in the cave. You've got lamps, like my, grand, uh, my grandparents had, they were like the glass base, they can have metal base too, and they had the, the wick and the like hurricane. Yeah, oil lamps, yeah. Dead oil lamps. Um, you can have a bonfire. You can have, like my parents have a wood stove. Uh, they also have a gas, their new house has a gas stove. Um, oh, I have another. But anyways, so sometimes I think like we are kind of like those. We are fire carriers because we carry the Holy Spirit. If the Holy Spirit is represented in fire, that means we are fire carriers. So that got me thinking like, well, which one of the fire carriers am I? So I feel like a birthday candle is kind of like the first, the very first time you believe. The very first time someone says something like, oh, that could be true. You know, like there's a little flame there. There's a little bit of light. But birthday candles don't stay lit very long. They can't light up a room. 
They don't give off heat. But there's a, there's a fire there. I love, though, have you guys, I'm sure, well, you guys do this at Christmas, I believe, where you, everyone has a candle, and, like, one person lights it, and they all, like, t I love that. And then, like, within a minute or two, the whole room is lit up. I love that, and that is a cool thing about fire. Fire spreads, and it can spread pretty easily. Fire can heat, fire can light, fire can cook, fire can spread. Like, sometimes that's good and sometimes that's bad. <laughs> if you're outside, it can be bad. If you're inside, it can be good. <laughs> okay, it can, like, warm a room. And so, then I think, well, what about, like, those birthday candles, those trick ones? That's like, you believe, and then something happens and you're not sure you believe, but though no, now I believe again. Oh, I'm not sure what I think. Oh, wait, maybe I do believe. And you're kind of like back and forth. That's like those trick birthday candles, right? And so they also, they provide a little light, just like regular candles, a little light, but no heat. Then like taper candles. You guys, they used to light their houses with these things. Like this is, this used to be their light switch, were these taper candles. And you see in the old movies, they've got the, the candelabra with like six candles and they're carrying it around at night. And I think, that's a lot of wax all over my house, one. Think how expensive that had to be. Like, think how many candles you'd have to buy if ever, because I imagine a taper only lasts one night. If you keep it lit all night, I don't know if they kept them lit all night. I don't know, but that just, you know, so they did provide heat light for a longer time than a birthday candle, but they're easily blown out, and they, you know, they, you keep going through them. So then, I, then they, you know, like, they up technology, upgraded to those oil lamps, and so that's got a base and it's got a wick, so there's a little harder to light, but they last a lot longer, and they have in that glass hurricane thing protects the flame so they're way less likely to get blown out like you could carry that outside and it's way less likely to blow out last much longer <clears throat> gives off much more light and I imagine if you're close to it it gives off a little bit of heat I mean you're not gonna like warm your whole body but if you want to warm your hands I bet if you wrapped your hands around the hurricane thing you could warm your hands so that's like a progression um, my parents new house uh, has a gas well so they have Basically, an unending supply of gas. Now, this their gas well can't heat their whole house in the winter. It doesn't have enough pressure. Like, but some do. Some have, like, they were talking to a guy. He's like, I keep my house at 80 all winter because I have a gas well and I can just heat it however much I want. And I thought, wow. And so I got thinking about the disciples. So I feel like before, before Pentecost, they were the gas lamp. You know, they carried light. <clears throat> because they had the little protector thing, their light didn't go out easily, but they needed a refresher. Like, they kind of kept coming back to Jesus, and he would refill their, their base with oil. But I feel like after Pentecost, they became a lamp attached to a gas well. Or like a gas, like a, a gas stove, like a, not stove, like a fire, like a gas fireplace in your house, right? Like, it heats your whole house, it lights up your whole room, and if it's attached to a gas well, you could be like that guy who keeps his house at 80 all winter long because you don't ever have to worry about the gas running out. So when the disciples had the Holy Spirit come on them, they became a, a traveling <laughs> gas fireplace that's attached to a gas well. Full of power, full of light, full of heat, able to cook stuff like all the benefits of fire without worrying about it going out. And I, so I start to wonder, like, well, which one am I? Am I a birthday candle? Am I a trick candle? Am I a taper? Am I a gas lamp? Or am I the gas fireplace attached to a gas well? Like, that's what I would like to be. I would like to be the gas fireplace attached to the gas well. I think, for me personally, I think I'm an oil lamp. Because <laughs> I need to get my fill. Like, I have to keep coming back to Jesus to get my fill, or I get emptied out. So my question to you this week is, which one do you think you are? Do you think you're a birthday candle? Are you a trick candle? I would hope, I would think, I think in knowing you guys, I think we're all past birthday candle and trick candle. <laughs> you know? But the next question is, do you carry your flame wherever you go? Or do you come to church with your flame and you're like, look, I've got my, my lamp. And then do you go home and put it in a room and then leave it at home all week while you go out? Because in the Bible it says, do not put your lamp under a basket. Like, we are meant to take our lamps wherever we go. If we're doing our job as Christians, we should change the atmosphere of the room. 
You know, a gas stove changes the atmosphere of a dark, cold room. And that's our job as Christians, is to change the atmosphere. When I'm with my family, do I change the atmosphere? When I'm at work, do I change the atmosphere? When I'm with my friends, do I change the atmosphere? You know, like, I've gotten to a point now, if people swear in front of me, they're like, oh, sorry. I'm like, you swear? You're not hurting my feelings. But they, because they, you know, were like, I feel like people talk bad about people less when they're around me because they know that I am like, I'll, I'll usually champion the other person sometimes. I'll champion the other person. Well, maybe they think this, or maybe they think that. And it's because I'm like, that's God's kid they're talking about. On my good days, I'm like, that's God's kid they're talking about. On my bad days, I'm like, yeah, they're a jerk. <laughs> so sometimes my candle flame wavers. <laughs> but my, comp, my challenge to you is to ask yourself this week, which of these fire carriers are you? Are you changing the atmosphere of wherever you go? Are you bringing light? Are you bringing warmth wherever you go like the disciples did? Do you, are you getting baptized in this? These guys were baptized in the spirit in this moment. And when they did power, immense power came on them. Do you think you're heading in that direction of being baptized in the spirit? We want to use our gifts. We've been talking about our gifts. And each of your gifts is like its own little candle flame. You know, I want, I'm hoping that you're bringing those gifts that you have to wherever arena you're in. Hanging out with your friends on a Friday night going to work. I hope you don't take your gifts and your light and just set it on your table and keep it to yourself and then go out in the real world and leave it behind. My hope is that you carry it wherever you are because you are the candle. You know what I mean? So uh, that's all I have. And all of the children of the Lord said, Amen. Amen. <laughs> Did I miss a verse? Oh, I totally missed a verse. Oh, sorry. I missed a verse. Carl. Um, so you might be saying, yes, I'm in. How do I, I want to be a candle. I, I, maybe I feel like I'm a taper, but I want to be an oil lamp. What do I have to do in Acts 2? Because they, they, at Pentecost, everyone's like, this is awesome. Yes, we want to know more. And so they're asking Peter, like, what do we do? And he's like, okay, step one, repent. And then, and then once you've repented, get baptized, which most, I think most of us have been baptized. Have your sins be removed. So we need to also come to the Lord this week and be like, do I have any sins? Because if we have sins, those snuff out our candles. When we live in sin and we don't repent of that sin, that makes our candles go out. Okay? So, and it says, if you repent and if you keep coming to the Lord and saying, I'm in. I'm in. What do you want me, Lord? I'm in. He'll trade up your candle. He'll trade up your lamp to the next level. But it takes that willingness of our heart to say, I want in. I want to bring more fire to wherever I go. And then he, will, he wants to bless that. He loves that willingness. Okay. And all God's people said, 